I've decided to teach evolution for a number of reasons. Firstly, it's rather a topical issue, coming up as it is, the 150th anniversary of what I believe is the most insightful book ever written on the origin of species by Charles Darwin. Secondly, principles taught in this book are as relevant today as they always have been. And finally, there have always been many misconceptions associated with this subject, and I'm hoping in some small way to rectify some of these with this group of students. One hundred and fifty years ago, there was many aspects of science which we, hadn't, we didn't understand and some we hadn't yet discovered. No more so in the natural science arena. There were many, many, many questions we had with no answers. Why do giraffes have long necks? Why have zebras got stripes? And also, why does my friend the caterpillar taste so bad? Why does he taste so bad? What we're going to try to do in this lesson is address these issues and come up with the answers. About 150 years ago, one man came along and made some very, very careful observations. And then he came up with an idea, a great idea. Some people say the greatest idea any human being has ever had. That man's name was, does anybody know? Was it Charles Darwin? It was Charles Darwin. And what was his great idea? That, um, that man evolved from monkeys or something. Ooh, that was, that's not a very great idea. Evolution, I think. OK, something to do with evolution. All right. Look at my caterpillar. I want your ideas, I want your views. It doesn't matter if it's right or wrong. How do you think he came about to be so yucky? Think. What could have possibly caused him to taste so bad? Anybody got any theories? Yes, Inka? Adaption. Yeah. Did he consciously think about it? No, it just happens over time. It just happens over time. That's an interesting point. Any other theories? I do. Yeah, OK, Tony. The food that the, food the caterpillar eats. It's yucky. That's a fantastic <laughs> idea. That is a fantastic idea. However, doesn't that mean if it tastes yucky, isn't the caterpillar going to suffer because of it? We might taste certain things that taste disgusting, but such as your friend there, <laughs> he might taste some food that might be nice to him. It's a good you idea. Know? Do you want a sweet? Yeah, I'll take a few. Have a sweet. <laughs> <laughs> That's two. Very good idea as well, Tony. Have a sweet. Well done. OK. What we're going to do is we're going to develop your ideas, OK, by doing a series of activities to put into practice the principles of natural selection. Now, I want to introduce you to your environment. You live in the jungle. Can I have four boys to form the jungle canopy? One, two, three, four. Out you come, quick. So we have four big, strong, tall trees. There you go. Marvellous. Thank you, chaps. Just stay right there. OK, the rest of you are predators. You live on the jungle floor, OK? And you feed on these strange creatures which live in the canopy called wigglies. Now, there's a lot of you, and wigglies are in very short supply. To survive the day, you need to eat as many wigglies as possible. There ain't no friends in the natural environment. Every man for himself, get as many wigglies as you possibly can. One, two, three, go! Get him! Stop! Sit down! Take your wigglies with you! Quickly, quickly! Take them with you! Absolutely fabulous. That was a fight for survival. Really, really good. <coughs> Who didn't get any wigglies? Put your hands up. Let me shave. Hands right up. Jackson, why didn't you get any wigglies, my friend? People in my way. People in your way. Why didn't you barge them out of the way? Because I'm a nice person. Because you're a nice person. <laughs> what if you'd been a squirrel in a tree and another squirrel came and barged you out the way and you didn't do anything about it? What do you think would happen to you? I'd die. You're going to die. <laughs> what do you think happens to you now? You had not fed today. I'll die. I'm sorry, you're dead. Who else? <laughs> Melissa, what happened to you? Um, people were in my way. I was at the back. You was at the back? Ooh. <laughs> at the back of the evolutionary queue, you mean? Yeah. Ah, uh, so what do you think is going to happen to you? Die. OK. How many people got more than five wigglies? <laughs> OK, very good. Who got less than five? <laughs> There's not much energy in wigglies. You've only got five or less than five. What do you think is going to happen to you over time? Die. You're probably going to starve to death, aren't you? Why do you think that was? What do you think you need to do to survive next time? Move faster. Maybe. Move faster, maybe. Yeah. Maybe you're just not. Maybe you're just not built to move fast enough. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe you're not aggressive enough. That's what it is. But nobody's ever going to find out because I'm afraid you're dead. You're dead. Who had more than eight? Fantastic. Well done, Martin. Well done, Eugenia. Okay. Let's say then to survive any one day you had to collect eight or above. Eugenia, why do you think you survived? Um, so I sold it off other people. 
<laughs> Do you think there's anything wrong with that? Every man for himself, or woman. Every man or woman for himself. Martin, why did you survive? Because I just thought I might as well just stretch my hand as further as I could, like drag some off the floor. You know, uh, everybody was trying to pick some, also pick some. That's quite clever. So you adapted then. So yeah. You thought differently. Very, That's very right. good. Laura, what about you? I just ran and snatched. <laughs> <laughs> did you did you care about the feelings of other people? No. Very good. Have a sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Martin, have a sweet. Eugenia, do you want a sweet? One this time, thank you. And Eugenia, have a sweet. Thank you. Okay, fantastic. What lessons? What's the key points that we can learn from that activity? In the wild, there's always what? Trisha, there's always competition. I like that. Well done, Trisha. There's always competition for what? Food. Sean? Food. Only food? Um, like shelter. Could be shelter, yeah. It could be lots of things, couldn't it? There's competition. So there's always a struggle, isn't there? There's a struggle going on at all times in the wild. A struggle for what? Territory. Sure. Territory. Survival. Awesome. Yeah, very good. Survival. We're struggling for survival on a day-to-day -day basis, OK? So that is one thing to bear in mind and a key learning point that we need to understand. There's competition leading to a struggle for survival. Jackson, can I borrow you, please? Thank you very much. Can you just stand right next to me? This is a difficult game. Ready? Hands around. Spot the difference. Can you tell the difference between me and Jackson? Oh, I'm better looking. <laughs> he's got longer hair. OK. Why are we different? You're taller, he's shorter. I'm taller, he's shorter. Good. Some variation there. What else? Yes, Sean? Skin colour. Skin colour's different. Yeah. Interesting. Anything else? He's younger. <laughs> he is definitely <laughs> younger, yeah. Right. Shape of your nose is different. Shape my nose, yeah. I've got a sort of curvy nose and he's got a, a wider nose. Why is this then? Why are me and Jackson different? We are the same species. We're both human beings, yet we look different. Why, Alison? Because you have different genes. Different genes. Oh, very, very good. What are genes then? What are they're genes? They're the thing you find in your DNA. Things you find in your DNA. What do they do? They're like instructions for the cells. To do what? Why are my genes different from Jackson's? Do we have different genes? Because we have different parents. Different parents. OK. So are you saying my parents' genes and Jackson's parents' genes are different? Yeah. So what do you think is one of the driving factors in all the variation amongst all of us? What is it? It's the fact that the genes are? Different. And they are? Very. Very because our parents different. are different. OK, so there's variation. Thank you, Jackson. Just sit on a second. So there is variation. There's variation. What do you think actually causes these differences? What causes, what causes them? Yes, Remy? Is it that like mutation? Mutation, excellent. Can you explain to me what mutation means, please? What is it? Uh, it's like when the um, cell develops something that's not meant to be there. Like, uh, Spot on, really good. So it develops something that's not meant to be there. Something happens which is not meant to be here. What causes it? Why does it happen? When does it happen? Does it always happen on Wednesdays? No. What, what, when does it happen? Any given time. time. Over time. Over time. Over time? Can we predict? Can we predict it? No. So it's not, if it's not predictable mutation, what could we call it? Unpredictable. <laughs> What's another word for unpredictable? Irregular. Irregular. Unexpected. 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 Well, the word we use is Random, oh, that's okay. Random, random mutation. <laughs> so there's always random mutation, which causes these changes. Now, in our next activity, we're going to try to model this, okay? I'm going to assign to you a number of key mutations, okay? So let's say you come up and spin on my magic wheel. Number one, tell me, give me a good mutation we could have for going underneath the canopy. Yes, Laura. Arms to grab more food. I, said, I like that one. How about two arms? So you can go and use two arms. OK. Are all mutations good? No. no. Give me a bad one then. Yes, Sean? Like if you're kneeling on the floor. Good. I like that one. Let's have that you are kneeling, OK? You're going to get mown down, basically, aren't you? Should be quite fun. Mm -hmm. All right, number three. What else can we have? Give me another one. Another, another, another bad one. Slope. 
Slow. Go on like this. Yeah. Yeah? We go through like that. No cheating. And then let's say, to finish off, we'll have, because not every single person has a random mutation, do they? How about no change? So you go through just as you did before. You're going to come up. You're going to spin the wheel. Just gently, so it goes around a couple of times. Get your mutation and stand at the back, ready to go. OK? You must obey your mutation. Do you understand? Ready, steady, let's go. <laughs> that was a big spin, Emmy. <laughs> OK, and then by Wednesday, we found out that Femi was two arms. Very good. Get ready and go up there. Slow. Two arms. Well done. Slow. Kneeling. Slow. 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 No change. Kneeling. Slow. No change. Slow. Kneeling. Kneeling. No change. Kneeling, Nisha. Ready, steady, go. And stop. Stop. Stop, stop, stop. Okay. And down. Sit down quickly. Okay, bunch of savages. Um, who did you get into? Jackson, did you get any this time? Yeah. Good man, well done. What adaptation did you have? Um, same. Same, but what did you learn from last time? I went at the front. Yeah, very, very good. Okay, did anybody not get any at all? Well done. Okay, who got. Who got more than five? Very, very good. Who got more than eight? Okay. Zena, how many did you get? About 12, probably. What was your adaptation? Kneeling. Kneeling? <laughs> <laughs> you got 12. Very good. How did you manage that? I was on my knees, so most of them were on the floor. Because <laughs> you ah, weren't no. grabbing them. That's very, very good. What's happened there? An unforeseen circumstance has happened, doesn't it? She's found herself a little niche. She's kneeling. We thought that would be a bad mutation, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. But what was happening in the big scrum there? They were all falling to the floor. So just by random chance, Zena finds herself being actually selected for because she can sit on the floor whilst you're all scrumming up the top there. And she's just gently picking them all from the floor. Where was my slow people? How many did you get, Manuel? 19 or 20. 19 or 20, very yeah. good. How did you manage that? Stole it off the chest. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so what adaptation do you think you've got that maybe an animal wouldn't have? Smart. Sorry? I'm smart. You're smart, very, very good. It's a very powerful adaptation that humans have. Emmanuel learned and he adapted. He's smart. He's got a brain. OK, who had about three or four? Who had the puniest amount? Aww. Yeah. Why was that? Emmanuel <laughs> stole mine. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so his behavior, his inherent behavior actually helped him Thief. steal them from you. OK, can I have your wigglies, please, in the bowl here for me? Very, very quickly. Did you know? Many thousands of years ago, probably on this very spot, there used to be hippos. There were hippos in England, possibly Wales, Scotland. There were hippos. Anybody seen a hippo lately? Where are they all gone? The climate change. The climate or the, what's another word we give for it? The environment. <coughs> Excellent. Now, I think that's a very, very important point. I just go back to my key points. Sometimes the environment can change. Now, what we're going to do next, we're going to model another activity. Um, so, you know, I'd be very, very interested to see how you survive in this actual activity. What I want you to do this time is I want you to keep the same adaptations from last time, OK? But we're going to change the environment. Just like the hippo in the UK all those years ago, over time, he gradually found his environment changed. When his environment changed, he found he wasn't adapted to survive there any longer. OK, so in this next activity, then, what we're going to do is model the effect of a change in the environment, which means the canopy is going to be higher. Now, if you remember last time, you had a mutation. I want you to keep those mutations for this time. So what were they? We had people who were Hello. slow. We had people who were kneeling. kneeling. Two arms. Two arms, and the final was no change. So can you stick to those mutations, please? Oh, are you ready? Are you steady? Go! Stop! Sit down! Sit down, quickly! All right, let's count our wigglies then, please. Kneeling people, where are you? How did you do, Francesca? I couldn't get any. Why not? Because there was none on this side on the floor, and I couldn't reach. You couldn't reach a canopy? Well, that's a shame. What do you think is going to happen to your mutation? 
I'll just die because I can't get any. You can't, yeah, die. You can't get any. Eugenia, how many you got at the back there? 16. 16. What was your mutation? Slur. Slow. How did you manage to get 16? I slow? jumped. Sorry? I jumped. Ah! Am I allowed to do that? No, I don't think you are, so we'll disqualify you. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. But it was a good adaptation. Maybe you could have evolved to actually do that. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Martin, how many you got? Go about 12 here. 12 here? How come did you get those? How do you get that many then? Just got to really just. Go what was your mutation? It. Two arms. Two arms. Now, do you think that helped you survive in this environment? In a way, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um. Yinka, how many do you get? One. Why just one, Yinka? Because <laughs> people are kicking me. <laughs> <laughs> what about the height of the canopy? What was your mutation? Um, kneeling. Kneeling. Did you reach them? No. <laughs> <laughs> They're too tall. So, what we have here, what is a key learning point? We have a change in the environment, don't we? And only those which are best what are going to survive this change in the environment. Yes, Sean? Best adapted. Best adapted to? The environment. Not just the environment, but that particular environment. That special environment that you're in <coughs> at that time. And if the environment changed, let's say all the tree canopy went, and then we went back to grassland. Do you think, Ayinka, then maybe you would survive? Yes. Maybe you would survive. So these are the important points of natural selection, OK? So let's just recap. We have, in any population, there is competition and a struggle for survival. survival. Very good. In any population of organisms, there's always going to be variation caused by mutation and also random breeding, okay? Random transfer of genes. Evolution or natural selection is dependent on the environment and only those organisms which are best adapted, adapted to that specific environment are going to survive. This is what Charles Darwin, my hero, came up with, okay? The man was a genius. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put all those together into a separate activity. I want to introduce you to my friend. Jackson, you've been sitting on him for ages now. Can you just get off Blob for me, please? <laughs> Thank you. He hurt his feelings. OK, here we have Blob. OK? Blob is an undifferentiated organism. He lives in an undifferentiated background. He lives on a black background, and he's black. Doesn't do much. He just exists, OK? But let's say, for instance, that the environment was going to change. Let's say it was going to change. I'm going to give you a choice of three mutations. Then I'm going to spin the wheel to change the environment. And then you're going to decide, do you think you would have survived in that environment or not? Here are the three mutations. Well, actually, there's four, because you can just go like this and stay the same if you want. OK. All right. Mutation number one, fins. Mutation number two, let's see them. Wings, very good. Mutation number three. Very good. Very, very fast running legs. And action number four. Oh, you can stay the same if you want, OK? What is going to happen is this. I'm going to go one, two, three, and you all choose a mutation. You cannot change once you've chosen. One, two, three, go. Keep it up, keep it up. Keep it up, it's doing very well. What's the number? Three. Okay, if you think, if you think you survived, stay up. If you think you've died and got extinct again, sit down, please. Okay, Tony, why do you think you survived? You've got wings, mate. They can fly above the water. Oh, well, we, we live in the water. Oh, we live in the water. Yeah? yeah no, I guess I do. I guess you do, <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> All right. Riff, why do you think you survived? Because um, my fins can help me move through the water. Easily. Fantastic, Jackson, looking good there with your fin. More fins, more fins. Marvellous. OK, so all your mutations, again, I'm afraid have gone extinct, haven't they? You've gone extinct. What do you think is going to happen to you guys, though, with the fins? Breed. You're going to breed. Excellent, you're going to breed. And because you have that mutation in your gene, your offspring, chances are, are going to have... Babies. <laughs> they're going to be babies, yes. <laughs> but they're going to have... Fins. Fins. Fins, marvelous. So let's say we do a little bit of breeding. E -e 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 -e. Marvelous, and we have lots of fin babies. Stand up, please, fin babies. All of you. Okay. All right. Let's just say this time the environment's going to change again. Okay. So you're in the water. This time we're going to have a color change. Now, if you can look at the clip charts for me, you will see 
underneath the clip charts, three different colors. They are blue, green, and yellow. What I want you to do this time is, after three, one, two, three, I will spin again, take your color, and slap it on your forehead for me, please. One, two, three, go. What we got? Four. Number four. OK. Let me tell you how the environment has changed. Look, we have open water for number one, ocean, sea bottom, or kelp forest. So you now live in a kelp forest. Kelp is seaweed. Big, long, green strands of seaweed. If you think you survived, stay up. If you think you've died off, sit down. I'll give you a clue when you're bright yellow, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a clue, Trisha. You're bright blue in a green kelp forest. So, Rat, why do you think you survived? Because everything is green. Everything is green. So, what's, what's the word with you? Camouflage. Camouflage. And how does that help you survive? Um, um, the other ones won't eat you because they can't see you. The other ones? What do we mean by the other ones? What's the word we use? Creatures. Alison? Predators. Predators. Excellent. So, you camouflage. Also, let's say your prey, okay? Um, I know. Underwater wigglies, you eat them and they can move about. How is it going to help being green? Yeah. You can pounce them. Yeah, you can creep up on them because you're camouflaged and then whoomp and down they go. Fantastic. Okay, you green fin people, your genes have been passed on to the next generation. So, what do you think is going to happen? You're going to produce babies, babies which are green and green. Okay, start. I'm glad you stand up like that, Remy, because, of course, it doesn't necessarily mean that all the babies are going to be green, OK? Because there's always variation, isn't there? Oh, 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 oh too late. Remy and Martin were afraid. Out of the babies, we did have some which were blue. So sit back down again. You're dead straight away. <laughs> but that happens. That happens. They're not all going to be green, are they? Because there's variation in every population. OK, next one. This time, the environment is going to change again. And this time, you are going to develop sense organs, OK? to sense your environment. And you have a choice of three sense organs. We have eyes. Yes? We have taste. And we have vibrations. <laughs> OK? So there's your three. OK, are we ready? Steady. One, two, three, go. And we have the sea beds right at the bottom in the murky, dank sea bed. Now think. Eyes, people, do you think you'd be no. advantageous to have eyes right down in the bottom of the cloudy sea bed? No. No. Possibly, I don't think they're going to help, are they? So, eye people, can you sit down, please? No. Sorry. <laughs> OK, what do we have left? Zina, do you think your adaptation is going to help you down there? It's very cloudy, it's very murky. Yeah, Can't see anything. Why do, you, why do you think taste is going to help you down there? Um, I don't know. Because you can't see it, you've got to taste it before you... No. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's quite literally going on your tongue and, mm, mm, and tasting the floor so you can find your food. Catfish don't care what they eat. They just oh, got up anything in front of them, OK? So they taste it first. So taste is a good one. Sean, yours is an interesting one. Sense vibration. Do you think it's going to help you down at the bottom of the sea? I think it would. Yeah, I think it like, would as well. Um, like dolphins and stuff, they've got that echolocation thing. And ah, now that's that. a very advanced one. I don't think you're quite a dolphin yet, and we're not using that echolocation, but you can, you can sense things around you. Which do you think would be the most superior over time? Vibration. I, I'll say the dolphin one. Do you know? I think probably what would happen is for a long time, you'd both compete with each other, wouldn't you? You'd both compete. And I think maybe sooner or later, one of you would outcompete the other. The only difference between Natural selection, what we just did, of course, is the time. We did it in 10 minutes. Natural selection does it in millions, millions of and millions of years. Outstanding. Can you sit down again for me, please? I think some sweets are in order for that. <laughs> Anybody else want a sweet? Of course you can. You may. See, you are so nicely. Right, we're in the lesson, we've learned a couple of key points um, about natural selection, 
due to evolution. If I just go back to them, if I can find them, here we have. Okay, so our key points was there's competition for all things, all resources, and there's a struggle for survival. There's variation due to mutation and random breeding. The environment can change, and it's only those creatures which are best adapted to that environment which will survive. What was the question I asked you right at the start of a lesson? Can anybody remember? Question you try to answer at the start of a lesson. Why did yes, the Lord? caterpillar taste so nasty? Why did the caterpillar taste so nasty? OK, before you answer that question, I want you to look. Here's my friend, the caterpillar. Here's my sweet bowl. Caterpillar, sweet bowl. What do you notice about the sweets? There's two different kinds. What's, what, what's the predominant sweet at the moment? That chocolate thing. Chocolate, thing. chocolate, brown, chocolate brown, brown thing. thing. Yeah. Why is that the predominant sweet? Yes, Eugene. Because if it tastes nasty, no one wants to eat it. That's what I said. Fantastic. And if it tastes nasty, nobody wants to eat it, what happens to it? Oh then it survives on. It survives, survives and it passes on its yeah. oh. origins to the next generation. Now, the important thing is, did you actually consciously think about that while you were doing it? No. No, you didn't. <laughs> Evolution is blind in its selection, OK? It is blind. It doesn't consciously decide. The caterpillar didn't consciously decide to be nasty tasting, did it? OK, just a random mutation or it might have eaten a plant which tasted particularly bad, mm. and it was a selection pressure, such as the predators, but then decided for it that it was going to taste yucky, because this is the one that survived, while all the tasty caterpillars, of course, got eaten. I will leave you with a final thought. Obviously, you've got very huge brains. I've got a huge brain, too. Do you think there's any relationship, from an evolutionary point of view, between the size of your brain and your ability to do this? Okay, think about it. That's the end of the lesson. Thank you very much.